Hey guys, it's Lisa. Um, I was gonna do this on my HD camera, uh, but I'm actually probably not gonna have that much time tomorrow because I have a lot of errands to run. Um, but I, I wanted to talk about, about an article I read in uh, Time Magazine today. Um, it's this one, uh, the November issue, called uh, Can You Still Move Up in America? And I was very happy to see it because it's kind of a point that I'm completely in right now, which I'm, I'm sure most of America is in right now. Um, something that really drew my eye in, in the beginning of the article is the first page is this woman who's like 29 and she's living with her parents and uh, making about 29000 a year uh, only in teachers, uh, in, in uh, income as a teacher, uh, because she just graduated and she has $35,000 in loans. And that's very, very like me. I'm not living with my parents at the moment. Hopefully I won't be anytime soon. I just graduated. I'm hardly going to be making 30000 if that. And I have 39000 in loans. So America is, is just really insane financially right now, and so are a lot of countries like like Greece and everything. Like all all the financial difficulties are insane, and and you know over in Britain it's getting really crazy too, and it has been. Um, and the thing about the article, which is uh, called "Whatever Happened to uh, Moving Upward," I think. Whatever happened to upward mobility? It kind of touched on the psychology of financial mobility um, because our, our country is very different in its mobility. Um, a, a lot of people, a lot of politicians focus on absolute mobility, which is strongly based on uh, the feeling that uh, people who, like children who uh, had successful parents tend, like, it's it's a commonality uh, for them to grow up in this country and be more successful than their parents just because of um, all the inflation and everything. But it doesn't really feel like much of a success um, to them because it's it's more based upon peers and, and how you're viewed there. One of the sentences that I particularly liked says, but just as we don't feel grateful to have indoor plumbing or multi-channel digital cable television, we don't necessarily feel grateful that we earn more than our parents did. That's because we don't peg ourselves to our parents. We peg ourselves to the Joneses. Behavioral economics tells us that our sense of well-being is tied not to the past, but to how we are being compared with our peers. And I can completely understand that, and I'm sure a lot of you um, can as well. Because um, it's not about, oh, yay, I'm, I'm doing as well as my mom did. Oh, yay, I'm, I'm doing better than my dad did. It's about, am I even being viewed well for that? Or am I still at the bottom rung or still at the middle rung? It's more about where you are in society now um, than it is about, like, how your family was. Um, they also say something really interesting, and I just lost my page, about the comparison between here and uh, Nordic uh, countries and European countries and even Canada. Um, it's, it's really interesting, actually, because it says, while 42% of American men with fathers in the bottom fifth of the earning curve remain there, only a quarter of Danes and Swedes and only 30% of Britons do. Which is really interesting because after like reading a whole um, article about social mobility and like how we how we do it here in America, it's really interesting to see that other countries have sort of found a handle on that and a way around it. But another thing that they focused on in the article that I was really impressed by, um, and and that's totally true, is uh, that. So social mobility is very, very based uh, upon variety, how much variety you have, how you deal uh, with the differences, um, the kind of stereotypes you're expected and that you see and that you expect of other people. Um, and that's the problem. America, while it's great that we have a huge like variety of ethnic, um, I don't I, I guess groups, um, it's, it's much harder 
um, like financially to believe yourself stable because every every group often has a different um, definition of what's financially stable. With the countries over there, it's it, the percentage of uh, ethnic population, of ethnic minorities is much smaller uh, than it is here. Um, for example, it says, yet it's important to understand that when you compare Europe and America, you are comparing very different societies. High growth Nordic nations with good social safety nets, which have the greatest leads in social mobility over the U.S., are small and homogeneous. On average, only about 7% of their populations are ethnic minorities, who are often poorer and thus less mobile than the overall population, which is a big thing about culture and, and like um, how you're brought up as a child and how your parents have done as a child and if they considered themselves successful and how they taught you culturally. Um, compared with 28% in the U.S. So that's 21% higher in the U.S., um, even bigger nations like G Germany don't have to deal with populations as socially and economically diverse as America's. So um, I just wanted to share that article with you because I, I found it really interesting. And um, I don't know, just like if you guys have any opinions on um, what's changing us in, in uh, financial sta sta stability. Yeah, stability. Uh, in this country, or uh, if you guys have any comments on how your country uh, deals with um, financial issues and um, their opinion of why why it's so unstable there, or um, if it's uh, more stable than other countries, I would love to hear it because um, I, I'm really loving these articles lately, uh, the Time articles because. I mean, obviously, to even work for time, you've got to know what you're you're doing, or at least know how to speak and and write uh, fluently, um, and and it's just it seems like a really in, intelligent magazine, and it has been for years. So I'm thinking for Christmas of getting a uh, year subscription, but you know, I wanna I wanna hear your opinions on it because it's it's a major issue, obviously in these years, um, generation, culture, political standing, family standing, all, all that kind of thing. So if you have any comments on it, um, please do. If not, thank you for watching the video anyway. Um, if you haven't, you know you want to subscribe, it would be really cool. I don't post very many videos so I wouldn't block your, your uh, list. Anyway, um, but I'm working on fixing that. So subscribe if you want like if you want. That would be really cool. Um, and I will see you next time. Bye.